Right up there is Mr. Naughty Bowl. He's up there for being uncooperative. After almost two weeks of work and a total of 10 minutes of edited video, I now have to start on something new. And since I was already in a bowl making kind of mind, we're going to continue down that hole. This is redwood. Okay. There, we're done. It's a bowl. As we're roughing it out here, you'll notice that I've got a pretty large section that's missing and that's going to define, help define our shape. Um, so I'm going to start to sweep this whole thing back and see what kind of a shape I end up with. There we go. It's a nice line. It's a nice curve. I think I'll give this lip a little bit of an edge here. I just looked down and realized I'm still wearing my slippers. I guess I got excited about this. Uh -huh. Hey everybody, let's turn a redwood bowl. So I'm trying out this new chuck that I've got from Amixter, which is a British company actually, and it's got these grooves in it here to hold it better. Any advantage I can get to keep a piece of wood or resin from flying off the lathe at me, I'll give it a shot. Between these two bands here is where the inlay is going to be, and I'm thinking I like the thinner band rather than the larger one. I think the larger one doesn't look quite right. Yeah. So I'll use that bigger one there to start hollowing out the bowl shape. Adding a bit of black paint to the inside of this recessed area. I think this will just help define this area a little bit. You've probably seen these if you've ever had a fish. These are uh, some bright colored rocks that you can get for your fish aquarium. So I did a test cast of these a while ago just to see what they looked like in resin and I wanted to see if I could turn them on the lathe. They do it is possible. It's really hard to do it since it is stone. You can kind of see they've got a white dot there in the center so the color doesn't go all the way through. Not only do they dull my tools incredibly quickly, uh, there's really no benefit to turning them. And while I do like this sort of randomness of the colors, I think it might be even more interesting if we sort them out into a rainbow look.
red, orange, yellow, green, And what I want is I want these rocks that sort of, I want to make sure that they're below the surface level of the rim here, since I know I can't turn these. And it doesn't have to be the exact same amount in every section. You can see some of these are larger and some of them are smaller. It just needs to feel right. It's feeling right to me. Um, so this is the blue section. It should be our last section. We're going to be using Alumalite Clear Slow for the resin here. It's mixed by weight and not by volume. So that's part A, 105 grams. And we just need part B to be the same. Okay, we just mix the two sides together and we have 12 minutes from this point. Okay, I feel like we crested the top of the rocks here. And that is good. All right, and now we just have to wait like four hours and we can see what it looks like. So here she is out of the pressure pot. I have to say I'm a little unhappy. And why is it all white under there? Yeah, so Alumalite is a urethane based resin and any moisture at all, it does this, it foams up. I, I didn't think there was any moisture in here. I'm yeah. guessing it's the paint. The paint's the weakest link. Yeah, so I did the whole thing over again. Nice. Uh, yeah, it's nice now. I used a different resin. I used Total Boat resin for this. The shape of the bowl is different. This one's got a concave profile, and this one's got a convex profile. I like the round. Yeah, I do too, actually. I ended up making this groove a little deeper and a little shallower, where here the lines are really hard between the different colored rocks. I tried to merge the two together a little bit. More variegated. More what? Very variegated. Cool. Variegated. Right. The intermixing of colors oh. irregularly. Honestly, the only thing left to do is get rid of the resin here that's on the edges, sand it, and be done. Do you want any bleach? <laughs> I bought this from a architectural salvage yard. It was a big old piece of redwood. I don't know if this was drilled in it or if at some point something ate that hole, but either way, it's interesting. The wood finish, I'm just going to use this walnut oil. I'm just going to let the wood take as much of this as it wants. Just buff off the excess. And this is old growth redwood that was used in wine tanks where they stored thousands of gallons of, of wine before they converted them all to stainless steel back in the, the 80s and 90s. I would guess it's anywhere between 80 to 100 year old piece of wood. As to the rocks, <laughs> really like the way they look. It gives it a nice pop of color and you can barely even tell there's resin in there. It's super clear, came out great. I did reach out to the folks at Total Boat who let them know that their product saved this project and they wanted to give a coupon code for my viewers. 20% off products on TotalBoat.com until the end of December. That coupon code is in the description of this video. I was just about to explain one of the other reasons I picked the rocks. Why did you pick the rocks? Funny you should ask. <laughs> Besides being crazy. It's funny, all of them fluoresce except for the blue. I wonder why. I don't know. The green is super bright. Yeah, it is. And then I think it's the orange and then the pink. Oh, we're getting a really cool reflection right here. 
Yeah, this what is, is that? Well, that's just reflection from lights. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks really neat in the video. It's amazing. It does. You too can get reflections from lights <laughs> if you set up your camera just right. But even without the black light, I mean, I hate to say it, but I'm really glad I had to do it a second time. I am too. It's, yeah. It's a better shape. Uh, it's a better thickness. Yeah. It just, it works, just works. Sometimes you have to start over. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and we will catch you guys next time.